Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,291. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,291 to 1,293 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have an amazing question here. We need to figure out how to score a Myers-Briggs assessment or test in Excel. And the Myers-Briggs test has 32 questions, and each has an answer of either A or B. So over here, question number one, control down arrow, all the way to question 32, we have one person's answers, A, A, B, A, A. We need to figure from this lookup table what letter gets assigned to each question. So for example, 1A should get an N, 1B should get an S, 2A an I, 2B an E. We need to then list all the letters and then down here count how many E's, how many F's, how many I's, and so on. Now. Here is the lookup table. And this lookup table means if I am trying to match 1A, I have to find it inside the middle of a lookup table. Normally, when we do lookup, right, we're doing VLOOKUP finding something in the first column, or we're doing index and match where we have to find a row header and column header and find the intersecting value. But here, we're doing a reverse lookup. We're looking inside the table. And for our example, we need to return the column header. All right, now there's going to be three videos on this, each one with a cool solution. But this one, we're going to assume we have to keep the table like this. And so what in the world are we going to do? Well, first, we can simply, in a formula, join the question number and, with the ampersand shift 7, the letter. Now we could enter this, control enter, double click, and send it down. But what I really need to do is I need to match this. Now this is a rectangular range. So at its essence, we're going to at least ask the question, hey, 1A, where are you in the rectangular range? So F2 to put it in edit mode. And then we simply use the equal sign. Hey, answer for question number one, are you equal to any of these? Now, there's never going to be any duplicates in this situation. Now, I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock this. Now, if I evaluate this just to look at it with the F9 key, you can see it gives me falses and only one true. Now, what I really want there instead of a true is the relative position of whichever letter it is from that array right there. Now, we're looking up 1A, and that means it would be N, which is 5. So I really need a 5 there. So watch this, Control-Z. We're going to have to put parentheses around this, because we're going to multiply that array, and I need to force the comparative operator equal sign and the ampersand to calculate before multiplying. And guess what? I really need position 1, 2, 3, all the way to 8. So I'm simply going to hard code this in, assuming that the Myers-Briggs test only has these eight letters. So watch this. In curly brackets, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 8, and then end curly brackets. Now when I do this multiplying, every false is going to get a 0, but the 1 true will pick out whichever relative position it is. F9 to evaluate this. And sure enough, nothing but zeros, and there's that 5. So I'm looking up 1A, and I'm finding the relative position of the letter N. Now, Control-Z, if this test might have more or less than these eight letters, I would not want to do it this way. Then I would want to do something like using the column function. I need to create, with a formula element, a dynamic array of sequential numbers. Now, column, I'm going to highlight E9 to L9 and hit the F4 key. Now, column right now looks at E to L and delivers an array of 5 to 12. So if I hit F9, that's not going to work. So what do I do? I subtract from that array 5 to 9 the column function. But now I'm going to give it a single cell and hit the F4 key, close parentheses. Now, 5 minus 5 is 0. So when I highlight this, each one of the numbers in this 5 to 9 will get subtracted 
a 5. So when I hit F9, it gives me 0 to 7. Not what I want. Control-Z. I want to add 1 back in. Now, there are other ways to create a dynamic array of sequential numbers. But this is the most robust. If I move this table or insert columns or other structural changes, this will remain intact 1 to 8. Not only that, but if I insert a column right here to add a new letter, it will properly change from 1 to 9. So if I highlight this right here, F9, you could see it gives me 1 to 8. If I evaluate the entire thing, F9, there it is, that same thing. Now, all I want is 5. And because there will never be duplicates, all I have to do is add this, Control-Z. Now, this is filled with a bunch of array operations. There is an array operation. There's one. There's another one right there. There's one right there. So guess what? I don't want to have to use Control-Shift-Enter, so I'm not going to simply use the sum function. I'm going to use the sum product function. Now, notice this is blue, and when I hit Tab, it's actually going to steal that parentheses right there. Oh, that's terrible. So I have to make sure to put another parentheses. Now, sum product usually takes array times array times array and multiplies them. That's the product part. And then adds. That's the sum part. But I am simply using sum product because that array argument can handle array operations without using the special keystroke for array formulas, Control-Shift-Enter. So I'm simply going to add it, close parentheses, Control-Enter. There's the relative position for 1a. Double click and send it down. There's the relative position for 2a, right? 3, which is i. Now I want to control down arrow and make sure F2. I got all the cell references working, looking good. Escape. Now I come up here, F2, relative position 5. I need to now use that in a lookup formula, and I'm using index. Now index needs an array of values it's looking up, so I'm simply going to Highlight the letters. There it is, F4 to lock it, comma. Now, it says row number, but I have a one-way array here. So what it really means is relative position. So that will work. That 5 will tell index within that range to look up 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the letter N. I come to the end, close parentheses, Control, Enter, double click, and send it down. No way. Look, there it is. There's the I. There's the F, right? 3B is F. Now I have my column of letters for each one of the questions. Now I come down here for the final score, and I simply use count ifs, which will count with a given set of one or more conditions or criteria. So the criteria range is simply the whole range, Control, Shift, Down, L, F4, comma, and the criteria. Please count only the E's within that range right there. That's a relative cell reference. Close parentheses, Control-Enter. So when I copy it over, at any given position, count ifs will be looking at the letter above, going over here and counting. So there it is, Myers-Briggs test. When we are stuck with a rectangular table, we go ahead and do a number of array calculations to get relative position from this rectangular range. In essence, doing a reverse lookup to then look up the column header letter. And then, of course, we come down here and do our count ifs. Now, in our next two videos, we'll see probably the smarter way to go, which is to convert this to a proper lookup table. And we'll, in our next video, see Power Query. And then our last video, we'll see a great lookup adding array formula, which will create a single cell formula for each one of the scores. All right, we'll see you next video.